Hello, music appreciation students, and welcome to, uh, I guess, your first lecture video, at least in order, and the first one that I'm recording for this course. Uh, these lecture videos are intended to be uh, not entire lectures. I'm not going to sit here and talk at you for 50 minutes. Rather, what I'm going to try to do in these short lecture videos is to just go over one or two concepts about uh, specific things from each part of your textbook. And the first one that I wanted to talk about was the concept of performing media. Okay, this is in part one of your text and what it generally separates performing media into are the concepts of voices and instruments. And what's interesting about voices is that uh, the human voice has the unique ability to fuse both words and musical tones. And so not only do we have the story that comes with the actual musical sounds that are being produced uh, with regards to key and harmony and melody and things like that, but we can also tell an actual story. Uh, the lyrics themselves can convey meaning or message or story-like aspects. And we're gonna see huge developments in the use of the human voice throughout the course of music history in the Western world, going all the way back to Gregorian chant in the Catholic Church. And what's interesting about the difference in the dichotomy between voices and instruments is actually how each one developed. The major developments in uh, vocal performance and vocal music actually sprang from what was going on in the church. Uh, you'll find out through the course of the semester and in reading your book that instruments, aside from the organ, were not even allowed in most Catholic churches uh, until well into the 19th century. And so uh, while the organ may have produced some elements of uh, production and, and uh, evolution for keyboard music, uh, largely what was going on with vocal production and uh, choirs and things that were going on with vocal music were happening uh, with regards to the church, with the early Catholic masses and, and things like that, while instrumental music was largely driven by what was going on in the secular world. When we think about orchestras and chamber groups and uh, later on when we get into the, uh, the 20th century, the wind band uh, and rock bands and hip hop groups and things like that, uh, all stem from what was going on with orchestras and instrumental music with secular music. Okay. Now, voice classifications generally run from high voices to low voices. Uh, the four main voice classifications are soprano, uh, which is the highest, usually female voice, alto, which is a middle female voice, uh, tenor, which is a high male voice, and bass, which is a low male voice. Now, there are other aspects. Uh, as we get into opera, we start learning about the contralto and the basso profundo and the coloratura soprano. But we have these four main aspects from high to low, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. Vocal music is frequently performed with instrumental music. Uh, when we talk about the parts of the orchestra, one part of the orchestra that we should always consider is the fact that there are voices with orchestras many, many times. And when we think about things uh, like operas and oratorios and cantatas, oftentimes we are blending instrumental and vocal music. Now, when we come to music instrument, an, an instrument is any mechanism other than the voice that produces musical sound. So anything can be a musical instrument if it is uh, utilized in such a way that it presents a musical sound. Now, in the orchestra, generally we uh, divide the sections of the orchestra, and you can probably remember this back all the way when you think about your elementary music class and the posters that were up on the wall. We've got your string section, the woodwind section, the brass section, and the percussion section. And within these sections, we have lots of different instruments. For instance, in the string section, we have violins, violas, cellos, basses, uh, and harps. And sometimes uh, it can be argued whether the piano is a percussion instrument or a string instrument based on uh, the vibration of the string itself or the fact that the string is struck. In the woodwind section, we have instruments like the flute, the clarinet. Uh, in later orchestras in the 19th and 20th centuries, the saxophone section, uh, we've got the English horn, which isn't uh, like the French horn. It's not a brass instrument. It's a, a woodwind instrument. The bass clarinet, the bassoon, the oboe. Uh, and then in the brass section, of course, we have the trumpet. We have the, uh, the French horn. We've got the trombone, the tuba. Um, and in the percussion section, we've got our timpani, our snare drum, uh, chimes, uh, cymbals, bass drum, uh, xylophone, all of those. And those are going to be the four main sections of a, of a symphony orchestra. And of course, as we start seeing when we break down into smaller groups, those instruments and, and a lot of that instrumentation remains the same, whether we have a chamber group, which is consistent of only maybe 10 to 15 uh, instrumentalists, or even down to like the uh, string quartet, which is just two violins, viola, and cello. And these uh, different types of instrumentations are going to be fairly standard depending on the type of music that you're listening to. Um, and uh, when we talk about 
instruments and instrument classes and instrumental music largely like i said before they uh, generally tend to run with secular music rather than sacred music simply because of the kind of taboo for instruments in the main catholic church of the western world but the popularity of instrumental music sort of rose and fell with uh, tastes of of the people themselves like what is it that people actually wanted to listen to okay did they want to listen to uh, uh, you know, the, the orchestra or chamber groups or large groups or small groups. And that's a big deal. Okay. Um, when we talk about the instruments themselves, uh, we've got four main classifications, chordophones, which have any kind of string that vibrates to cause sound. Okay. Uh, violins, cellos, the guitar. We have aerophones, um, air sound, any instrument that uses air, uh, uh to, to produce sound. So this can be brass or woodwind instruments. Um, this is a general instrument classification. Uh, we have membranophones in the uh, percussion section, and this is anything that is a drum, any kind of a, uh, a membrane stretched over a resonating chamber. And then we have idiophones, and this is where the body of the instrument itself makes the sound. Things like your xylophone, your crash cymbals, where the body of the instrument itself vibrates to make sound. Okay. Now, uh, one of the things you're going to be examining in your listening assignment is Benjamin Britten's Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra. And many of you probably have not listened to a ton of orchestral music in the past or vocal music or opera or anything like that. And that's OK. Uh, you will get plenty of that uh, as we talk about sound media. Now, in the 20th century and beyond, we start getting a new classification of instruments, uh, the electronophone, uh, uh, instruments that use electricity to produce sound or to augment their sound. You can play an electric guitar and still hear the chords and the melodies and everything like that. But generally, an electric guitar is augmented with some sort of a pedal uh, to change the sound as well as an amplifier to amplify the sound. When you think about things, uh, if you've ever seen a DJ uh, produce or somebody who is using an iPad uh, to uh, uh, generate instrument sounds and to put something together. If you've ever used GarageBand yourself, uh, all of those are synthetic instruments and those can be considered electronophones because they are synthesized sounds. And that's something that has only been around for the last uh, 80 years or so. Um, and we'll see lots of compositions in the 20th century, especially uh, where we start to explore what we can do with uh, digital synthesis, uh, combining sounds, producing sounds with digital implements and things like that. So that's your first lecture video talking about the actual uh, media we use uh, to produce uh, music that you're going to hear in this course.